that one? Oh. Ooh, I did it twice. What is wrong with yeah. that? Well, the song is so good. You have to play it twice. It, 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 it have to play it twice. A remove from the studio. How are you, my friend? It's been a while. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. It's been a weird week, but it's always a weird week. Just, just weird readings. It's been interesting. Um, it's just been crazy in some ways. I mean, I'm still getting inundated with all these weird messages and everything all the time. Um, we're going to talk about that Mexican alien thing today. Uh, I also wanted to tell everyone who's listening, thank you for all the pics that you've been sending of all your wear and stuff, because we're having a contest and we have a special judge, a special panel of inebriated judges that are going to go through your pictures. Yeah, they have to be, I guess. We'll have to do like a special, a special pick out like three judges, get them drunk or something. And then whoever they pick is going to win a really cool prize. And this time it'll be either it'll be a reading with me or a reading with Sean. So I guess there'll be two prizes. Oh, because, you know, oh, nobody okay. got nobody got the mediumship thing. I mean, the remote really? viewing thing at all. Yeah, I'm going to show them the picture. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, this is the picture for the remote viewing. Actually, if the, this was the picture in the remote viewing. I've had a picture done of this that hung in my office the first time I was in Westchester and I took it with me to Arizona. It was a big poster. I remember that. Yep. I remember that in your office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do, you know, send in your pictures. They're uh, the uh, professionals that like the models who work for us, like Olivia and Katie, you all, you know, you all aren't included in this. You know, you all aren't included, but anybody else, you know, send in your stuff. And thank you to Allison, who sent us in pictures. Uh, Felicia Modaber from Ocean View, Delaware, sent us a picture. I put that up. She goes, don't you dare. But you never know. It could win something big. Um, yeah. What else is going on here? Uh, real quick with the recaps. Um, right now, I am working, you know, our big secrets out there is going to be my we're working on my own deck of cards the reading yeah. cards spiritual dust cards i'm so excited about that there are a few people out there that are doing a little something for me with the card and you're one of them don't forget to pull out your your picture um but oh, no yeah. man it's um i'm excited because we've got a whole new group of people coming in to do shows with us um, I sat and we had a show uh, last week with Kay Alston, who's into hermetics, tarot, reading, all of that very, very loving, wonderful coach, person, and healer. We're also going to have Lisa Falconeri on, who is a healer from Maine. I didn't even know they had. Can you be a healer and live in Maine? Isn't it too cold? It's too cold to be there, man. If she's from Maine, we'll have her on. And I'm super, super excited to have Allison Prettyman. She does Akashic Records, that kind of stuff. She started as a massage uh, therapist and a healer. When I first came to Westchester, I, she like met me on the street. And she has been in my life two or three times, like with, you know, you have those people, they just show up when they're needed. And then like something out of a TV show, like Batman, they're gone. And that's her, like, I'll have this moment with her, like, an hour, like, doing great, yeah, 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 it's great. She gone. Batman's gone. Mm. She's like, but she's taught me some things, like, Rick Wood, if you actually use the calendar on your phone, you can arrange things. Like, I was supposed to meet her and have lunch. I almost went a week early. You know me. Because so, <laughs> I got lazy, and I guess it was the end of July, I stopped using my calendar. And with my ADT, that was not good. So I'm back to the calendar. So, on with the show, man. Yes. Have you heard yeah. about this Mexican aliens thing here? No, you're going to have to educate me on this. I'm not that educated. I was excited at first. I was going to put it up and looked at some of the pictures. It was kind of like what they did in the United States where there was, like, in front of the Mexican Congress, they were doing this, you know, we have aliens kind of thing, except with the guys who presented it, it's... 
it's very strange looking it, it, but there's nothing there isn't anything to back it up yet and some of the other biggest researchers are like why would you bring this up if we don't you know we want to see the x-rays in it all of this and that i'm not saying it's not true i'm just saying it feels, it feels a little fishy to me you know because there's uh, plenty of real i was going to put some of it up but it was just like it, there were bodies there but you know you could have made those bodies out of plaster of paris on did i say that i sound like i'm in high school um yeah <laughs> yeah but it, it it wasn't that can it wasn't that convincing um well the fact that they, well they're talking about it there's something to it right i mean they're they're making it public there's a disclosure that's happening well isn't it like mexico is a little different than um the united states they, their UFO information isn't considered classified. Right. And they have a right. lot of reports. Like there's a lot of uh, encounter reports, you know, as far as like what first, second, third, uh, like the classifications, like the first encounter, second encounter, third encounter. So there's, there's a lot of reports that come out of Mexico and uh, South America right. in general even from your area the northern part of the state like weren't you up at the ranch not too long ago again yeah yeah a lot of activity up there what happened I mean, it's, it, uh, some really really cool things that we saw in the sky i mean lights that look like stars but they move in erratic behaviors there was uh some type of I don't even know how to classify what was going on but it kind of looked like Star Wars to me I mean there was like a light that we followed and tracked across the sky and then it stopped and another light appeared and then there was almost like a, a light exchange happened between these two lights and then one disappeared it like blinked out and then the other one did a couple movements that were not like straight lines like erratic like down up over and then and then just disappeared out of sight and um, this happened two different nights there was definitely they blend in with the night sky it looks like a star and it's no different than the, another star except for the stars are more static they're still in the sky being they're moving but at, at a very very right. slow rate where these are moving you know and they're not moving like starlink like we saw starlink when we we're up there and it's obvious that that's satellite right right it just in the way it behaves how it moves and then there's other lights that were not and uh this it's just so interesting you know and it really allows you to open your mind and think about what's going on up there or out there and i've also noticed too i don't know if you agree with this or not I got to stay off TikTok because it's hard to figure out what the hell is what on that damn platform. But there have been a lot, most of the sightings are about these things that look like stars that are moving in certain patterns. That's been the okay. bulk of them. Like if you look it up, it's like all of these clear night skies and it's not like something is moving like this. You know, something will come here and something will drop down next to it and they'll move together like this. Another right. one drop, they'll move together like that. Um, so like we've said before in our other shows, I think it's all going to get tossed at us right here soon. Everything is going on, all the craziness is. So, you know, here's why I sound like the weird government conspiracist, but UFO stuff is perfect to keep people off their mind of other stuff. <laughs> so right. It's like, I know. Like, that makes you wonder if it's a... A diversion tactic or if it's you know or if it really is part of this disclosure uh, that they're trying to um, what's usher in name? a new age i think it's dr graves or whatever so you see him on all these different you know he's got his own movie shows all other kind of stuff and he's the one that talks about there are man-made uaps and then they're the extraterrestrial yeah so some of this is going to come out as as that you know um and i think you know it's like there's and he also talks about their regular aliens 
there's it's somewhere between did we talk about that 50 to 70 different species i don't think we put a number on that i know it's no no about, they I, just I heard this. i've heard like 70 species that have been listed and um yeah so you know my thing here is before yeah. we get too whacked out it, that's starting to come i feel like and then i would say in the next month two months there will be a major type of boom sighting there already has been it's just not been released um, and it just you know oh we were talking about um when we were talking about the ufo stuff over the phone you brought up time lapses and that goes yeah. right along with all of this stuff it, it does with the uap that because that's what it says right um aerial phenomenon right unidentified aerial phenomenon there's this whole other component to the phenomenon part where people have uh time lapse right and they're missing time um other types of phenomenon that is going on while these sightings are happening and uh, i was listening to a, another podcast and one of the people who called in shared a story and about missing time and I, I, it was really thought provoking because uh, i haven't had experience with a missing time i have had some kind of other strange experiences but it, it her story was really really compelling i mean this person was shook up and they didn't have any reason to make it up they're not promoting a book or a show or anything of that she just really wanted to tell her story and kind of get it off her chest is it messed with her pretty bad i don't know if you want to me to give a recap of please the story but uh recap brother recap okay so yeah this uh this woman she was meeting a friend at a gas station the gas station was an older gas station that wasn't in service anymore but you know there was still a building there the pumps had been removed and she was uh texting back and forth with her friend her friend had to stop at the grocery store and she was going to get in the car with her friend at this gas station and ride the rest of the way to the friend's house. And the friend said, you know, I'm about 45 minutes away from you. I'll see you in a few. And she stepped out of her car. She had a cigarette. She says she remembers just kind of looking around and knowing that she had time to kill and leaned against like the fender of her car on the passenger side. And she finished her cigarette and then her next memory is waking up behind the wheel, her seat belts on, and her phone is dead. So she has to plug her phone in to get it to turn on. And when it does, she's got all these missed text messages, uh, multiple missed phone calls. So she calls her friend, and her friend says, yeah, I got to the gas station. You and your car weren't there. And in her memory, uh, she was having a cigarette and she didn't get back in her car. She remembers just looking up at the sky and next thing she knows there's seven hours had lapsed and her friend got to the gas station and there was the text messages on her phone saying, Hey, I'm here. Where are you? Did you leave? You know, cause you're waiting and you're coming back or, you know, and, uh, her friend, uh, and her, she went, she ended up going there and driving herself up through this Canyon and uh, they, they can't explain it. She has no markings, no memories. She did regressive uh, therapy to try to find out what happened. There's nothing there. Then the, the weird thing is, is that the time lapse part, I mean, that could be anything from, uh, you know, like a cognitive disorder, right? Like, but her car was missing. She wasn't there and her car were Whoa. gone. So that's the part that was the most puzzling part for her and her friend is her friend believed her that, yeah, I don't think you just disappeared for eight hours and came back in a um, frantic, upset state, you know, and all of a sudden just reappeared. Something happened. But she's like, when you're talking about physical objects, like the car and things of that nature, there's something else at play. And that she doesn't believe she went anywhere. She doesn't believe that she drove away. She doesn't believe she was abducted. She doesn't think that her and her car were taken in a light beam up to the sky or anything. She doesn't think any of that. 
she thinks that this is like some type of layered uh, reality. Like there's some reality that on another plane or something, and it got interfered with in that moment. And now there was this uh, disconnect. Um, the closest just, thing it was, me, it was a very interesting i think that's crazy man thank you for sharing that um what's happened for me that the only time that i've had time glitches the closest thing to them is if i've ever channeled when i've channeled like when i did that session in arizona a couple of years ago the colonel all of that andromeda um I was there probably two hours and I felt like I had done it in 20 minutes. I felt like it was over in 20 minutes. And I go, no, man, we've been here for two hours. So that happens a lot. If I've channeled in some way, if there's a regression going on, I lose time. Uh, that reminds me here, that too. And someone's talking to me the other day uh, about past life regressions. And somebody asked me if it was worth it. I go, well, it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's a cool thing to do, but I don't always know if, first of all, it doesn't pick up on every past life you had. And, you know, if, you know, you were a murderer in a past life, hopefully you won't do it this time. Um, but I don't I know. If, um, I had one. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was saying you were saying um robert taub did something like that with me when i was going like that that was a little different it was like boom i just saw pictures of stuff um it it, 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 it it's interesting but people that try to use it to get an answer to something sometimes i'm like uh oh, you kind of knew you did this so it let me know that i definitely don't like war as much because i'll never forget they had put me under and the woman who was doing it with me, um, I was talking. And you're, when you're doing a past life regression, you're the one that's, you know, it's coming out of you. It's not coming out of them. And I was right. at a beach. I was at a beach in the Pacific. And I said, there's this, this doesn't make any sense. I keep saying this, like, Indian. And it's just Indian. He's got, like, feathers here. Why would he be on a beach in the Pacific? And the Indians pointing at a gun, like a rifle, whatever they had in World War II they were using at the time, was stuck into the ground. And there's a helmet sitting on top of it. And I guess tags hanging off of it. And he looks at me and it's kind of let me know that's where you went. Oh, wow. Like, and so when I come out of the session, now this is where it's wild, you know, um, and I'm sitting here and I'm looking up out of the chair and I'm trying to explain to her that, you know, this guide or person showed up and I look like this and I turn to my left and I look up and there's an iron bust up in the corner. I go, he's, she goes, you mean iron horse or whatever she said? And I said, yeah, she goes, she's, he's my guy. He's helping you through the process, which, and that was probably another two hours right there that I didn't even know that that time had gone by. That's definitely yeah. been time glitches for me. And I'm not taking away from the past life regression thing. I think people should do it if they want to. It's just I don't always know if like if people have tried to come to me to get that done to thinking that it will fix something. Like if you knew you were Cleopatra or you knew you had a hard time with numbers in a past life that that's why you have one now. You still have to work through the number situation. Right. And it's like with past thing. life, that's why it's a past life. Because you're not supposed to interact with that side and remember everything. That's why this life is important from my understanding is that it should be new information. It should be fresh. It, there's something that we have to learn. And so if we're constantly going back and remembering and reliving the things we've already done, then it's interfering with what the lesson is in this life and what needs to be learned and accomplished. I mean, even for me, I don't, I'll remember the time I, I went through something. It's just, I've, I've been through shit. You already know that. So I went through something and while I was going through it, it was awful. 
but I would not allow myself to use a pendulum, pick up a card, use a card deck. I would just ask for peace of mind. Why? And, I, and my mentor was like, you know why that happened, don't you? I'm like, what? I go, but I was adamant about it. I, I, I was just not going to do it because you had to go through that process. You wouldn't have gone through the process the same way and you wouldn't. And you already know magical stuff has already happened in these like eight months, like yeah. crazy stuff. Everything from a clothing line to this podcast, to the clearing dust spray, to the other stuff that's coming, you know, the, all the new guests that are coming on here. It Stop moving around in the chair so much. Okay. Um, you know, I'm a very okay. antsy person. Aren't you having some kind of cocktail or something right now? What are you having? What are you drinking? Um, I made myself a martini. You know what? I'm having alkaline eighty-eight. It's That's just good summer. water. Mm -hmm. Distracted here, man. Yeah. So, what was I saying? Got distracted. Um. Shoot, I don't know. After you told me to stop moving around, I got distracted too. But you were talking I about must. the crazy things that had been going on. Yes, and all the... I had to walk the walk, How no matter how painful it was. It just... I had to. You know, I just... I, I know what kind of person I am. I just learned the hard way. Um, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, man. And... Um, I'm excited for the new shows all the way up to Christmas. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Some of you have contacted me about wanting to be on the podcast. Um, you know, go to my website, take the email and send it to me. You know, a little bit about your bio, something like that. I do have to talk to you a little bit. It can't just all be on email because, you know, what if you really couldn't speak or something? <laughs> <laughs> what if you're like... You, you know, you call that in. Um, I'm, I'm not well. So, I'm not well. <laughs> not well. You're not well. So, um, yes, sir. I, I was going to ask you a question about the UFO stuff in Mexico. Um, did they, did, did they say what it, what it was? Was it biologicals that they found? They or said it, it was their own the crash. Uh, all we know is these flying objects that they look like they look like aliens. They're tiny bodies, long, three long fingers, um, and you know they had this like ear thing here. Um, it looked like mummified stone, is what it hmm. looked like. Nothing else with it really. I think they did a couple of X rays, but it, it wasn't conclusive. So it's, it, it, if this sounds so just, I sound like such an American, but I think if this was even in Britain or someplace else, it just would have been put together a little better. This was more like, hey, we got some aliens. Now they say they found them. What's the name of the, the NAS lines that are in South America? The Nazca lines? Yeah, they said they found bodies there, too, or something of that nature. But none of this is like, it just sounds and feels a little hoaxy. And there's enough real stuff out there that doesn't have to be hoaxy. Right. Yeah, it makes you wonder if there's just some type of an agenda, um, if it's just a slow trickle of information that's kind of prepare people for something else that's going to be shown and or discovered. You get this feeling, I've gotten this feeling that, that this thing, this bubble of shit that's coming is trifold. It's like, it's a lot. It'll all happen at once. It'll be a stupid China thing, UFOs landing at the same time, and McDonald's will go back to that 25 cent burger for like a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, funny. <laughs> I, well, that was so, I'm old, man. They did like a I think it was like I think McDonald's hamburgers were like ten cents at one point, and one day in the nineties, I think they did like you get the cheeseburger for like thirty-five you know, cents. 
something like that. And my buddy oh, Mark I went and bought like $20 worth of them. <laughs> and like wrapped them up and put them in the freezer. And uh, yeah, but I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, that too. I'm sorry. It's all good. Um, but yes, people, please send us that information so I can get it. And topics that you want to see us cover as well. I liked what we talked about today. Um, yeah. It was really, really interesting stuff. But like like we are trying to find out here what's real and what's not real. And, um, you know, keep doing that every single time. Uh, so, you know, it's funny. We're recording this and somebody's texting me who knows that we're we're doing the show. They're saying, hello. Um, please call Teresa Hurst. Okay, I will. I forgot about yes. that. Yes. Yeah. No, I got your message the other day. Anything else, brother? Um, I did kind of have another unique thing that happened uh, recently. Unique well, me. Okay. So, unique me. Um, I'm driving. I'm with a friend. Um, we we pass this truck and as we're passing the truck, I get this feeling not to look at the driver as we're passing. And so I, I don't, you know, um, but I do see the truck and the stickers on the back window and it's a, like a green Ford or Dodge or something. And we pass it. We're, we're like having this banter where we're talking back and forth about the guy, right? Like, Oh, he looks like a survivalist. You know, if you can, looks like someone who's just about to pull off into the woods and go rough it for a week, right? Like he's got like the shirt with the pockets on the sleeves and not the pockets on the, the vest, you know, part. And mm -hmm. he looks like he's hunkered down, you know? And we pass the truck and we're on a one lane each way road. And we're we had this whole like little story, like, you know, we're joking around, we're laughing and it's still a one lane road. And the one lane road after like five or six miles opens up so you can pass again. Right. But I'm going to pull over to get gas. It's like right up there on the right. And as, as I'm going to, to basically, I'm still behind the car that I've been behind the whole time. And as I get over into the right lane, the vehicle ahead of us is the car we passed like 10 miles, 15 minutes earlier. It's the truck, the guy, the stickers. We were never passed. It was a no passing zone. We clearly passed them there. Not only were they behind us, we, we made distance because they kept slowing down. Um, like they were looking for like the next turn off to kind of turn off. And you and know that area, so there isn't like they cut you off. No, no, no one passed us. We were still behind the car. We got behind when I passed them because they kept slowing down like they were about to try to get off the road and go down one of the forest roads, like one of the service roads. And so mm -hmm. I was like, all right, well, let me just get around him. And, you know, went around and uh, we see the truck again and we look at each other and I instantly get this pit in my stomach and the horrible splitting headache and they got a headache too and so i pull over at the gas station it's so bad i start dry heaving and my head is mm. just in a whirlwind and uh, we're both kind of dumbfounded like that just happened like yeah absolutely that just fucking happened nobody passed us we've been talking and it was we passed this vehicle and then all of a sudden that vehicle is now two cars ahead of us within a span of 10 minutes or so, but we never got past. I am still behind the car at this point that, that I've been behind the whole time. And uh, there's just this, just, we both got a horrible pit in our stomach. Like I said, I was to the point where I was dry heaving, splitting headache. And we decided we weren't going to talk anymore about it because it was kind <laughs> of unnerving and it went away. But, um, since we were kind of on the whole subject about time slips, it made me think about that. And so I still really don't understand exactly what happened. 
I tried to rationalize it being something else, you know, like, well, maybe they did pass us, but uh, they were like, no, no, no one passed us. We were, we were talking the whole time uh, and looking out the windows and talking about the scenery, right? The trees are this or the, the light is this, you know, and we were, we were having conversations. If someone would have sped up, especially this guy where we had this little joke, you know, between us, like, you know, when you just see a stranger and you and your friend start analyzing their whole life, you know, just on a simple passing kind of thing. Yeah. So it was, a, it was unique. It was it definitely not a time slip, but it was like this, the feeling that we both got this splitting headache after seeing the car um, was very unique, I guess, in a way headache and nausea it just felt like everything was off in that moment and you know out here you know uh, I said it when i was doing the show last week we've had that daniel cavalcante who was from brazil who escaped prison and we live out oh, yeah. i live out here in the area and he's been all over the place and i decided to use like a voice box ghost box i was tired i couldn't go to sleep and i said where is this guy and it started to go it didn't say anything at first and then it went creek then it went garden then it went sun then it went birthday and um and then run and it's going to be interesting because i already know that some of those things were going on but I'd love to see what I want to hear what the story is, how this guy did what he did. And uh, did they catch him? Yeah. Oh, you, you haven't watched it. They got him. He oh, they got him. caught him finally out about 40 minutes, 45 minutes from here. Like he was like right around in this area. He stole a, a van, a white van, and even stole a gun. You oh. know, so this, this, this is going to be one of those like, you know, Made for show time, yeah, yeah. Showtime needs to put a real late movie on, like at three o'clock in the morning. It'll be that. Say, Daniel, run, run. <laughs> but uh, he had. He looks like he got a bad case of um, German Shepherd because they tried to get him to stop, and so they released that little jar of German Shepherds on his ass and got him. <laughs> Oh, he wow. didn't look so, yeah. oh, he looked like he had a bad case of German Shepherd. He really did. He looked okay. like he had just broken out German Shepherd all over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Thank you, my friend, for another wonderful episode. And everyone who's been listening to us, thank you. We're getting a little better each time. Less audio interference. Uh, we are the live shows. Sean and I may do, but they won't be necessarily podcast episodes. It'll just be for fun. Uh, because when we have to look at the monitors, it's hard for me to have the conversation with him and then look at all your questions on all of that at the same time. But we will do the lives on Facebook uh, soon, I guess, right? Yeah. Yes. You, you just say that. You, you don't no. need it. I you want to do those need. with you. Need it, man. And uh, keep sending those pictures in. It's wonderful. There's certain people out there now who say they're sending stuff in. I want to see them. It's content for me and it's content for us and I can use them. And if you want to get the clothing, like the hoodies, all of that, that is at rickywood.net. Just hit shop and go on there. I think we just sold two uh, hoodies in the last hour. Wow. The BB thing came up. I want a hoodie. I'm going to have to go on there and get me one. Oh, you wanted spiritual dust spray, didn't you? Uh, yes, very much so. Yes. That is actually, and before we get off here, Allison Prettyman, thank you so much for posing and working with me for the spiritual dust spray. You know, she's just a natural. You know, other people, you get, get them to smile, pose. She, like, did it all. Thank you very much, Allison. All right. Until, I think, next show. Um. Oh. We have Don Hoffman. 
who oh. uh, had a, par a paranormal website, uh, worked on a lot of my stuff. She is into a lot of revolutionary war stuff. She knows her history. Yeah. She also kn knows the paranormal stuff about, she, I think she's the one that told me when uh, I was back in uh, this area in Exton like 17 years ago, I was doing a channeling right outside. Ooh, yo, get off that phone. I was doing a channeling yeah. at this place and I the guy kept referencing that the doctors were needed. Um, the horses all have to be moved. He's talking about this. And I think it's Dawn who told me that that is where they had the, like a hospital battlefield on there doing the Revolutionary War. So that was crazy. So she is going to be on the show. Uh, I'm hoping sometime next month. So we have cool okay. people coming on. I'm so excited. Yeah. All right, man. Peace out. If what? I said, do we get to interview her? Ask her some questions? No. Oh, okay. Is she just going to stand there? All right. <laughs> Tell um, stories. And also, too, we, you and I talked about this, but we're going to also have like a female guest host when we do certain shows, do like once a month or once every six weeks. So I have a nice little banter. It's nice to have that female you know, presence thing going on yeah. um, presence so and um, yes yeah, so I'm looking forward to it so until next time we need like a tagline like don't snort the dust or something I don't know right <laughs> <laughs> don't snort the dust all right thank you guys have a wonderful evening take care all right bye